So, uh, if you're new here, we've been going through this study. It's uh, called Bible Encounter. And it takes you through all the great themes of the Bible. And we're talking about the power of the tongue. And so, how many know what's, what you say matters? Our words have the power to hurt people. Have you ever hurt people with your words? Yes. Have you ever been hurt with, by words? Yes. Words matter. You know, with one word, God created all that we see throughout the galaxies. It was God's word. So your word has the power to destroy or to create. You know, when my wife and I, we, we talked about having a baby. And, and so we just did it. We we're going to have one more hug. Um, <laughs> maybe not. Don't scare us. No. Here's my point. Our words count. And even though I'm a pastor, sometimes I, I fall short in this area. And so Paul wants to talk about, to the, this is a message to the church, about how we use our words. And let me give you some backdrop. I always like to give some backdrop. Back, backdrop of what's happening in background. So Paul is in chains when he writes this book, this message to the, the Ephesians. And one thing I love about Paul is that it doesn't matter what he's going through in life, he tries to make the he tries to make the best of the situation. He could be all upset because he's all chained up, but he starts writing letters to the church to encourage the church. So when when you're all, going through a tough time, when things aren't going your way, do you make the best use of your time? Or do you, like, just give up? Paul could even easily give, gave up on God during this time. God, you let me down. Why didn't you answer, why didn't you answer my prayers? You know, when things don't go your way, maybe it's okay. Maybe God is still having His way. Amen? Amen. So let's go to Ephesians 4.25. You're going to need your Bibles. I don't have the scriptures on the screen today. So go to Ephesians 4.25. If you're there, say amen. If you're not there, say help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Ephesians 4.24. 4.25. And we're going to go up to 32. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood, speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Verse 26, this is the one that we all got to memorize. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Let me pause right there. We all get angry, don't we? There's, a, a, there's something called righteous anger. You know, that's okay. Jesus was, he got upset when he went to the temple and he saw the hypocrisy happening there that day. That they were, they were using the temple as a means to make money. And he got upset, he pulled out the whip and he, he scared off the Pharisees, the hypocrites that get out of here. My house shall be a house of prayer. And so he was angry, and he uses anger to discipline the Pharisees. He loves the Pharisees. He loves all people. God disciplines those he loves. So it's okay to get angry sometimes. But we're not supposed to let our anger to get the best of us. Let's read this again. Paul says here clearly. In your anger, do not sin. So don't let your anger to cause you to sin. There's a, a lot of intelligent people that are behind bars because they cannot control their emotions. In your anger, do not sin. Even righteous anger needs to be put in check. And of course, unrighteous anger has no way in our lives. Like... So when we're angry, we got to give that anger to God. Otherwise, speaking about the power of the speaking of the power of the tongue, if we're angry, 
we're going to end up saying something we end up regretting. Have you ever said something really harsh to somebody because you're so angry and you're like, oh, I can't believe that came out of my mouth. I have so many stories for you. There's been times where I got so upset with people and then something came out of my mouth and I was like, oh, I should not have said that. And I had to apologize to that person. Hey, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I was upset. So, do you want the devil in your life? No. Does anybody here want the devil in their life? No. Paul says that if you allow anger to fester too long in your heart, you're allowing the enemy into your life. You might end up hurting somebody really bad. Putting someone in the hospital or destroying a relationship. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. So before you go to bed tonight, if you have anger in your heart, give that anger to Jesus. Give that anger to God. Does anybody here str struggle with anger? No. Nobody here. We're all angels. No, I'm just not like I, I better just leave now. I, 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 to say. <laughs> I do not. But we all struggle with this subject called anger, don't we? Yes. And so Paul is saying, keep that anger in check. Otherwise, you might end up doing something, saying something that you end up regretting. Don't let the devil into your life. Don't let anger fester in your heart for too long. It's going to end up hurting you. And, and you'll end up hurting others. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work. Do something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. Anybody caught, caught stealing a car lately? <laughs> no, not lately. <laughs> but raise your hand if you ever stole something in your life. Yeah. We're, we're all guilty of stealing, maybe think of that time when you were a kid and you stole something from the store. Yeah. And so Paul's telling these Christians, remember one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. Keep God's commands. Stop stealing. Work. That way when, when you work, you make some money you can give, you know, to those that are in need. You know, at Hope City Church, we, when I, I, I just got paid, I give to the church. It's my way of worshiping God. It's my way of keeping God first in everything. Verse 29, we read. This is the, put on your seatbelts for this, guys. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. Ooh. Meditate on that for a moment. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But only what is helpful to building others up according to their needs. Man, I think this message applies to everybody, not just Christians. Everybody. Yeah. The whole world needs to hear this message. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your, come out of your mouth. But only what's good for lifting people up, building people up. Don't we all need to work on that? Yes. And uh, unwholesome talk might not necessarily be cussing. It, it might be like saying something that hurt people. Mm -hmm. I, 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 actually, I didn't mean to hurt my son this past week with my words. I got to be careful what I say. I was subbing his class this past week. I, I rarely get to sub his class. I'm a teacher. And so he's okay with me subbing his class. And so it was a video class where they make videos. And so as a teacher, I got to look at everybody's videos. And uh, unfortunately, my son's video wasn't that, that great. <laughs> and uh, compared to everybody, I saw everybody's videos. And I was like, I, I said, that's like a C. But I was giving my honest opinion. If I was a teacher, I would have given him a C. I go, you gotta spice up that video. I know you can do better. And, I was talking about it, and he interpreted it. I said, his video is the worst. And Sherry said, you said that. I got dead. I didn't know I said that he, his video is the worst. I didn't realize I said that. And he started crying. Because I said his video is the worst. I need to watch what I say. 
My, my words can hurt people. I don't want to hurt my children. I don't want to hurt my wife with my words. I don't want to hurt you with my words. As a pastor, i got to be careful what I say when I preach. I don't want to hurt anybody here or anybody watching online. Have you ever been hurt by a person that you look up, look up to? Yes. Have you ever been hurt by words by a pastor, yes. by a parent, by a friend, by a loved one? Words hurt. Yeah. Words matter. Catholic oh, priests. my son, another apology. I'm not a perfect parent. But I'm working on that. And so Paul, he's like a parent to the church. He's like, please be careful what you say. Use your words to uplift people. Don't use your words to cut people down. Is anybody hearing me? Then he goes on, that it may benefit those that listen. Everybody hears. Like what? You might not know, but people hear what you said. You know? Jesus says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever's coming out of your mouth is really just deep down here. So, oh God, work on my heart. Change my heart. Circumcise my heart. Make my heart pure. I don't want any unwholesome talk to come out of my mouth anymore. How about you? And do not grieve oh, the Holy Spirit of God. The word grieve means to make God cry. Do you want to make God cry? There's certain things that we can do that can grieve God, that can make God cry, the Holy Spirit cry. When you cuss, when you use foul language, when you cut people down, it makes the Lord cry. I don't want to make God cry no more. I don't want to make my son cry no more. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. It's in, it's in our Bible. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. And here are the things that make God cry. Get rid of bitterness. Rage. Anger. Brawling. Slander. Along with every form of malice. Those are just a, a, a few things that make God cry. All sins make God cry. If you're doing anything that's out of line, all you have to say, I'm sorry, God. It's our turn to cry. God, forgive me. I'm sorry for my sins. And the Bible is clear. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. When was the last time you cried over your sin? God, I'm sorry for this. Please forgive me. That's how we get rid of all those things, is by confessing our sins to God and repenting. Doing our best that God, help me to change my vocabulary. God, help me to change my ways. God, help me to do things your way. I don't want to do things my way anymore. Is anybody hearing me? Change starts right here in the heart. And only the Holy Spirit has the power to change people. And God changes us from the inside out. And the great news about God, He's patient with us. Sometimes change doesn't happen overnight. Although we want it to happen right now, sometimes it's a process. But we allow God to change you from the inside out. Allow God to get rid of anything that's not of Him. In particular, God wants us to wants to remove all sin, all sinful action, sinful words, sinful behavior. And he, I don't want to grieve God no more. I, I know you don't want to grieve God no more. Who wants to hurt God? He's done so much for me. He died on the cross for my sins. He was buried and rose on the third day to prove that he's alive and to prove his love for you and for me. And here's probably the hardest scripture for each of us. Be kind. Be kind. 
That's my challenge for you this week. Be kind to others. Be kind to yourself. Let me, let me, hear me. Give yourself grace. You're human. You deserve grace. God's given you grace. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to your neighbors. I know it's not easy to be kind to some of your neighbors. But we got to do our best to be kind to our neighbors. Can you be kind to an enemy? Can you be kind to someone that votes differently than you? Tell that to others. <laughs> Can you be kind to people that are unlike you? That have a, a different political uh, opinion than you? Can you be kind to that person? Or are you going to be mean to that person? to be kind to all people. Love your neighbor, uh, love yourself means to love all people. Even if they have a different religion than you. We are to love all people. Amen? Amen. So Paul encourages the church, be kind and compassionate. Ooh, that's, be loving. Be kind and loving to one another. Forgiving each other. Just as Christ, God, forgave you. So are you willing to forgive the people that have hurt you with their tongue? I know there's been some people that have said some bad things about you. Are you willing to forgive those people that have gossiped about you? Are you willing to forgive the people that have talked behind your back? Are you willing to forgive people? Because God has forgiven you. Who do you need to forgive today? And Jesus takes it a step further. He says to forgive people from the heart. Not just to give God lip service. Oh God, I forgive him, I guess. God, I forgive her. But you got to do it with the right attitude. God, I, I, to keep it real with you, God, I'm having trouble forgiving this person. Help me to forgive him. Help me to forgive her from the heart. Will God answer a prayer like that? He will. We're called to forgive people as Christ, God, has forgiven you. It's the epitome of, of hypocrisy to say, I'm not going to forgive that person when God has forgiven you. That's the definition of hypocrisy. Oh, God, I can't forgive that person. There's no way, Jose, I'm going to forgive that person. But God died on the cross and forgave you, but you won't forgive that person. we got to forgive people. And I'm not telling you it's going to be easy, but God can give you the power to forgive people that hurt you with their tongues, with their actions, with their deeds. It's an encouraging message for the church. And I've got to read it one more time. Be kind and compassionate to one, one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God has forgiven you. Can we stand? We're going to close in worship. If you could close your eyes, this is your time with Jesus. And bow your heads. It's a far when we bow our heads, it's our way of saying we acknowledge you that you're here, God. That your spirit is here. We bow our hearts before you. Maybe you're saying, Pastor Jose, I'm guilty uh, of sinning. By allowing certain things to come out of my mouth that's ungodly, if that's you, you don't have to raise your hand, but I encourage you to pray. Right now is your time with Jesus. If you need to forgive somebody from the heart, this is your time to pray. It's your one-on-one -on -one time with Jesus. Who do you need to forgive? Who do you need to be kind to this new week? Maybe anger has been the issue. Give that anger to God. Don't let the devil into your life. Give that anger. Give that pain. Give that frustration to Jesus. He died on the cross. For your sins. For my sins. Heavenly Father, you see our hearts. Forgive us, God, for allowing cuss words to come out of our mouth. Forgive us, God, for allowing words to come out of our mouth that are unholy. 
We don't want to hurt people with our words. But we'd rather build people up with our words. Help us to do that, Jesus. Forgive us for allowing anger to get the best of us. We don't want the devil in our lives anymore. We don't want the devil in our life at all. Help us, Lord, to control our anger. Help us to practice peace and patience and kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. Help us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And forgive us, God, for our sins. And God, help us to forgive those that have sinned against us from the heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship God.